What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What's well, good? We're back after a long rest period. Had to, uh, we had a long bye week, <laughs> uh, but we're ready. We're re rearing to go. Going to have a little fun tonight. Got the gang all here. Big Co, what up? What you say, babe? Oh, uh, you know, just hanging out. Good time in it. Watching my bad Rams plus six go to uh, go to shit uh, here. But Patriots plus six, you mean? No, Patriots plus six. Yes, thank you. I would be happy if I had Rams plus six right now. Uh, Jay Wayne, how's it going, bud? It'll be going a lot better when I get that Christmas cookie bag. Where's that thing at? Oh, man, my house. I don't even have a kitchen <laughs> table right now because there's just piles of cookies everywhere. And it's, I'm going to get the sugars. and. Yo, are there cake pops? There are no cake pops. Oh, I feel like I can't be upset because it's always like a big bag of free cookies. It's so kindly made for no. me, but... No cake no pops. Cake pop. oh they're, they're, the most, they're pretty labor intensive, so she didn't, yeah. she didn't go with those. If, so, it seems we're like there's a whole space cake. right now. It yeah. seems like there's a whole cake jammed into that one little pop. Oh my god, that's twenty twenty. You know, you got to get kind of cut something out. Yeah, yeah. cake uh, pops so those, didn't make they, the cut. I saw them going into boxes today, so or tonight, so because so we can get some kitchen table back. So there, are, uh, there'll be some boxes coming soon. All right. uh, but, Tonight, we are going to do a rookie redraft. So we're going to take the 2020 class here and, and redraft them, have some fun, uh, have a, a good a time here. A, a remock. remock. A redraft remock. Uh, PPR, Dynasty, uh, 2020, rookie mock. Uh, the fun thing about this is, like, really, at this point, like, the top, like, six, eight guys, you could really chop them up either anyway, and I can't be super excited about it or super – super upset about it rather um so without further ado i think jay wayne i think you drew the first straw so i think you have first pick um i think i think you're on the board i think i think like i said there's there's no really wrong answer here i don't think and and obviously this is going to change uh, multiple times probably from now till the beginning of next season so does anybody want to and let's do it does anybody want to trade up Come get your boy. Oh. That's Big Co's line. Come get your guy, Big Co. You want to trade up the one one? I'm down to move out of this pick. I'll trade up. Oh man, I don't know what to do here. I don't know I'll what to do with one one. I'll give you a third rounder next year to come up from one two to one one right now. Mm, that's way mm. too cheap. Gonna need gotta more. get more than that just out of principle. Yeah, I'm probably not even gonna take the guy you want. So maybe. I I know what I should do. I should just probably take. Justin Jefferson, because that dude is a beast. Or uh, CD Lamb, if 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 you want to play it safe and, and take the receiver, and and you know you feel good about it. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, I I, I could I can't argue against CD Lamb either. Um, he's definitely a stud, and he's shown very well. He he is, you know. I guess the, the plan would be long term for him to move outside some, but he's playing pretty much all of his snaps in the slot right now. Um, he is killing it from there, but. Gallup and Amari Cooper aren't going anywhere next year. Their contracts are too locked in. Like Gallup's too cheap, and Amari Cooper would be too much dead cap to cut. So I think you're gonna have to wait a whole another year before you can really see CD Lamb unleashed. Not that that should maybe sway you too much either, um, but I just know that Justin Jefferson's winning on the outside. He's winning as the number one guy when Thielen went out. He crushed it, um, and and. He's, he's showing that he doesn't need, you know, another dominant player over there to take coverage away from him to, to really just put everybody on skates. And he's usually gaining separation. If he doesn't, he's crushing contested catches. So it doesn't really matter how you slice it up for Justin Jefferson. Um, but, I mean, this is a running back show. Uh, we've always been pro running back. And, and even if you look at – Overall, running back numbers are down some this year, but still looking at the wide receivers versus the running backs. Like the, it's, it's, I'll always go back to this. like the, A stud running back can outscore the best wide receiver by 100 points in any given season. And so the running back is 
the running back's how you win championships, you know? I mean, I could probably have Justin Jefferson on my team for a while, averaging 16, 17, 18, 20 points a game. I don't know what his ceiling is, but I think he's averaging like 16 and a half or 17 points right now. Um, I don't know if you got those numbers down on your legal pad there, Case. I do not. But uh, I think I'm going to – I think I'm going to go a little crazy here. And this is fun. This is a mock. Um, and maybe if it was a high-dollar league. Make it make it as close to real life as you can, Jay Wayne. I mean, there's no reason just because it's a mock to just. I mean, how do you do, not take do, Antonio, do you, how do you not do take Antonio you do. Gibson? How do you not take Antonio Gibson? Because I'm having a hard time not taking Antonio Gibson. And I, I think that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this dude is just. He's doing not. He's not doing exactly what he did in college, as far as like averaging 19 yards of catch and 11 yards of carry. But he's he's doing pretty close to what he did in college. He averaged a touchdown every nine touches in college, which the big knock. And I'm I'm right there. I was I was one of not a hater, but I wasn't. Mm, you could put hater on it. You, you should you should say you were a hater because I didn't want to take him in the first round over some of these wide receivers. You were taking him in hater. the second round. That's not so true. You were definitely a hater. That's not true. <laughs> that's that, not true. That's you not were, true. It's okay. You were, you, you were a hater. It's okay. We all we all got guys that we hated on that that were that we reversed course on and we like you know it's just fine. Sure, you were you were, you were hating. He only had seventy seven touches in his career exactly. in college. Yeah. Well, there you go. There, there it, is. it is. There it is. Shout out to Casey for telling people they were wrong for caring about that. Shout out to Matt Waldman for grading him better as a running back than a wide receiver, even though when they asked him what he thought he should play, it was wide receiver. Although Matt Waldman didn't want anything to do with him. He didn't. He didn't either because there and wasn't I, a big I, sample size. And you went I to said battle with I was, I was basically – I had made this mistake already with Tony Pollard, and I wasn't going to do it again. I saw – electricity on the field and i was like fuck it like whatever and then the dare like he was a second round guy for me after a couple other guys went and then darius guy shit all happens and all of a sudden there's nobody left in washington and he ended up being a lot of 110 selections uh in in 110 19 and draft so and that was where i ended up having to take him so right i mean what this guy is doing is incredible um he just he's not even playing a ton like i think he's He's 23rd in snaps among running backs. Like, these are a list of guys who played more snaps than this dude. James Conner, Singletary, Kenyon Drake, and Chase Edmonds. His own teammate, J.D. McKissick, Jamal Williams, David Johnson. These are all dudes that are either backups or, or have missed time, and, and, and they've had more snaps than, than what they've given uh, Antonio Gibson in, in Washington. And he's, but he's RB6 right now, um, and that's with – you know, missing most of week 13, um, he's just he's just breaking tackles and evading tackles. No matter where you look for that stat, it pops out. Why they didn't give him the ball in college is, is beats the shit out of me. Um, but it's pretty simple. If you give him the ball, he's going to produce. Um, and, and he saw that on Thanksgiving. They decided to commit to him. That was the, the first time they gave him. That was only the only second time he's gotten 20 more touches. Yeah. Um, and he just he just beasted that Dallas defense, which you know they're not very good. But you just yeah, he just feels like he's he's a threat to score every time. And yeah, there it is, right there. I mean, he's when you when when he gets the ball in his hands, you're holding your breath. You're like, right. oh shit, that could be that could be it right there. And it's a mediocre offensive line and a a very mediocre offense with just 17. Terry McLaurin, the only other guy really to worry about. Logan Thomas is is coming around um, and looking good with Alex Smith in there because. You know, Alex Smith likes the tight end. Yeah, um, yeah. It just he's 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 super fast, but he also sets up and uses his blocks well when he has the ball in his hand. And he's 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 being patient and decisive. He looks really good as a runner, even though you know there is still room for improvement. And I think Matt Wallman has a video out there that he just put up recently where he's stopping it in super slow motion and showing where he kind of missed a an opportunity to get some yards here or there. But I mean, there's also so many examples of him just murking which is yeah. like murdering if you, if you didn't know what murk is but he's out there murking and then I haven't even talked about the fact that he's a wide receiver like he's lining up in the slot he's lining up out wide I think he they've only he has 32 catches on 39 targets they're not even trying to get him the ball but they can't help but do so and when he gets it it's outrageous so maybe I should take Taylor maybe I should take one of those wide receivers 
Um, but but the, the work that this dude is doing on the team that he's doing it with the limited amount of opportunity that he's getting is just outrageously yeah. incredible. Well, he, even with the limited amount of opportunity, he's right around most of what the other rookies are getting as far as touches and, and uh targets right. like when Except you look at the game James log. robinson and, and and right he's rb james robinson's rb4 and yeah. and and antony gibson's rb6 right so i mean there are some people that would push back and say well you know they're probably they might draft somebody next year and bob it's like i mean you could really say that about just about anybody but you know there's another guy on this list and you just talked about him when we get there we'll we'll discuss him and and why he because he's a higher ranked RB right now as far as overall in the season and why maybe, you know, you're not picking him one, one and he hasn't, he's not really in the conversation for me for one, one necessarily, or one, two, even. Um, and that's James Robinson. All right. Anything else on Gibson? No, I mean, he just, he knifes and slices and he strikes first Cobra Kai. Like that dude's just, oh, he's just, it. I missed, I missed out, you know, on him. And luckily, we we had we share him in a league with our patrons, and the two of you guys were like, "Nah, we need to get Antonio Gibson, spend the money to get him." And man, am I glad that that, that we did that in that that particular league. And I just uh, I gotta gotta I don't know, I gotta put him up there at the top. So that's all I got. What do you got? What you got, Big Co? All right, one well, one's like, Antonio Gibson. I like Antonio Gibson as much as anybody. Like Casey said, when he when after the guy stuff went down, we had two uh, late rookie drafts in August, and um, I took him at one nine in our tight end league, tight end premium leagues. We call it tight end league. Um, but I'm glad I kept my third round pick because I was taking Justin Jefferson. Um, all these rookie drafts that we <laughs> he's do. talking about in this particular, not in that draft that we had no, because no, going yeah. back to the, the mock draft that we're doing right now. And at one, yeah, two, you're selecting for, Justin Jefferson, right? All for Jay Wayne, my third rounder <laughs> next year to go from one, two and to the one, one in this mock. Um, but no, I, if, if one, one, if I'm, you know, I'm taking Justin Jefferson. Um, obviously I've got to love everything that Jay Wayne said about Antonio Gibson. Um, love last last week when Jonathan Taylor catches the fourth down ball from Phillip Rivers and takes it to the house. Nice soft hands out in front of him. The ball hits the balls just above his knees. Doesn't miss stride. Just Jonathan Taylor, all the hate out there. Just love to see it because people are just so quick and they just love to hate. Um, he's, a, he's a stud and it, it's going to probably be just fine. But all of the running back stuff that I preach in the off season for these rookies and the stuff like us, it's, it's, it's all because of the running backs, they do win championships and they're usually the first to gain value. They're usually the first in a young group of in a, every class to really get a chance to show themselves and become starters in, in your, in your lineup. But for me, like Jay, I mean, the 17 points a game that Justin Jefferson's averaging right now as a rookie with or without Adam Thielen in the game, in the lineup, with Kirk Cousins being his quarterback, and you can nod your shit. You know, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. If it's a one o'clock start, it's probably a good thing. If it's not a one o'clock start, it's probably a bad thing. Justin Jefferson doesn't care. I'm taking Justin Jefferson. If obviously CD, if CD Lamb has a higher floor, I mean a higher ceiling, I'm fine with that. If whatever Justin Jefferson's doing now, if I never got anything more than that, if it never got any better than this right this second. I'm totally fine with this. I'll put that in the bank. I like I like my qu quick upside or quick turnaround on running backs all day long. I love running backs all day long, but in what Justin Jefferson's doing now, I'm just thinking about one, two, and next after that. He's my he's the one one for me. He's just such a given, such a badass. Obviously, if Dak was in there and Amari Cooper got hurt, maybe I mean we could see Ceedee Lamb getting 12 catches a game, whatever, but. I just really, really, really like what Justin Jefferson is doing consistently week in and week out. And it's not like he's getting 13 targets a game. Um, he's just absolutely tearing it up. And to me, like Casey said, there's six, seven, eight guys. You could just kind of jumble up here. To me, Justin Jefferson's consistency separates himself for me to the one, one, and then everybody else is playing for number two. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I can't really dispute, However, you really want to chop it up too, too much. Um, you know, I'm fine with you taking Justin Jefferson over CD lamb. I'm fine with you taking Justin Jefferson one, one fine with you taking him over Jonathan Taylor, Clyde Edwards, Swift, all the above. Um, 
Well, we you did know. this. Mo- we did. We did two of these mocks, right? So, just for people listening, we, we did this mock a month ago. And we did this mock like a week ago. Uh, a month ago, I took Clyde at two. I took the second round pick because I just wanted. I, I I think I was the first one to get the link, and I had my option for the one one, but I just wanted somebody else to have it to see what they'd say. And I took Clyde at two, and I'll talk to. But I'll say I still I still love the long term of Clyde on that Chiefs offense, but. In the last month, like I said, every freaking week is Justin Jefferson. And so it's just not – it's not like just once in a while. It's not just like once every three weeks. It's every freaking week Justin Jefferson. And so I, what I've seen in him last month, he's he's cemented himself for me. Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got a 40-point a ceiling, which not too many guys have. Um, and, 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 like, pro football focus loves this dude. They, they said that only Devontae Adams has been more productive on a per-route basis than Jefferson this season. He's the highest-graded receiver on it in the NFL on deep targets. So this dude is a, is a precision route runner who's putting guys on skates, and he's also crushing it downfield and over the middle and in traffic and contested catches and just carrying that team and doing everything, uh, crushing the gritty. Uh, in the end zone, it's always fun to watch him. He's he's freaking. He gets to dance before he even scores. He's so wide open. So, um, well, let me let me say one more thing before Casey takes off because I get out of the way for his one three pick. This is obviously a fun exercise, but this is and we all the mocks before things happen are fun because you're still you're free to do whatever you want to do when the draft comes around, whether that be the startup draft or the rookie draft. But this, this is a redraft where this is all just banter here because there's nothing we can do now. There's no more rookie drafts for these guys. So like, again, it's the question marks are, there's still question marks out there for plenty of these guys, but there's question marks that are gone for some guys already. And that's, that's the case here. You know, this is a good time. It's a fun exercise, but you can't practically take this other than maybe, just enjoying the the conversation about it and maybe helping yourself or in your mind up and down rankings, how you feel about players, depending on how we discuss certain things. But, you know, given next year's rookie draft, that doesn't mean I'm not going to go take a, a wide receiver one, one, unless I feel like there's some ridiculous reason why I need to do so. You know what I mean? Like every, you yeah. can go back in the last 10 rookie drafts. I'm probably going to go find that running back then more often than not paid off. And and you got you can go back and look at all those rookie drafts where all those wide receivers did not pay off early, and you don't know what you still you next year just it, it, it this happens every single year you, you after after a you know six eight ten weeks of the season some rookies are bad some rookies will never they'll never ever be good. remember Devonte Adams Devonte Adams was on your waiver wire all of a sudden he's the best wide receiver in the league you know like he yeah. there's things happen that like there's players right now this this might not even be talked about in these first two rounds of this mock that two years from now could be a top three dynasty startup pick sure you know so like it's there's nothing here this can be said it's set in stone but yeah and i mean it, even this is a fun exercise because it we're, we're going on what we know now and we can look back and say hey this is what we're thinking then this is how we did it and i have zero justin jefferson on my dynasty portfolio right now because in that range where he was going i was trading back or trading up for jonathan taylor at one one you know i was i made i made moves this year specifically i was either going from that middle to late in the first round to up to get the number one stud or I was going back and getting and, and just getting doubling my firepower, mm-hmm. tripling my firepower. And for that reason, I have zero Justin Jefferson and it stings. It stings. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> look, and it goes the other way too. Like, I mean, Juju in September of 2019 was this 6.5 overall pick. You know, he there was he was the, he was the new wave of receivers. It was a change into the guard, and now he's down at forty. Um, right. So it can it can go both ways. So you know, it can go yeah. could be a guy that we're not talking about, and it can go. And I'm not just quoting the receivers. It just happened to be. I knew we were going to talk about receiver size. So I and I knew Juju's kind of had gone to be in everybody's darling where people either traded a ton for him or traded him away. And the people who traded him away right now look really smart, even though you know it was. Who knows why you made the move, but it, it looks like a good move right now. And it's not, it's maybe it's not even Juju's fault, really. Like they just happened to get Claypool and Deontay Johnson in there. And it like, it can go from being like, hey, this guy still is talented. It's not Juju's fault. And, you know, who knows if he'll end up staying in Pittsburgh or not. But like it, things can change so fast. You know, next year, Amari Cooper could 
tear of ACL and all of a sudden it's Dak and CD lamb. And we've seen a little Dak CD lamb action. And it was stupid that anybody even thought CD lamb shouldn't be, you know what I mean? So yeah, just like you yeah, were saying, yeah. big co. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So one, three here. Um, and just like you were saying, you know, you take the running backs cause they gain valuable right now on DLF. If you look at the November ADP, Clyde Edwards Alaire is number four overall and Jonathan Taylor is number five overall in November ADP. So that's why you draft those running backs. That's why you take them. And CD Lamb is the next rookie receiver and he's at twelve. And now that may change some in December. Um, but in November right now on per DLF, uh, this is how it shakes out. And those are just random mocks of different people, but you know, decent barometer for, for you know, one way or another in a range of however many spots you want to put it in. But at one, three, I'm going to stick with Jonathan Taylor. Um, and now, yeah, you said I, you, I could take CD lamb and play it safe and feel just fine about it. Um, I could take Deandre Swift. I could take uh, Clyde Edwards, a um, and feel just fine about it, but I'm going to take Jonathan Taylor. He was my one, one coming in. Um, I'm sticking, sticking with that. If I had the one, one, I'd probably take Jonathan Taylor again. Um, just, Everything I did, all my process over results, um, I spent a lot of time. There's, you know, he's, he was ridiculous coming out of college, and he started off first game, caught some balls, looked really good. They got him going, and then, you know, he had, he had some good games um, to start the season there, but necessarily wasn't looking super great. He was having good games despite, you know, not looking like – the normal Jonathan Taylor that you were used to seeing. And he's the last couple of games have been good. That green Bay was good. Um, and the Houston game was good. And the green Bay game could have been even more at the end of that game. There was a lot of ticky tack holding calls going both ways. He had a touchdown run that he broke for like 30 yards that got called back and, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Look, the Colts weren't blocking well, uh, run blocking wise. They were in the bottom third of the league with run blocking grades per PFF for uh, a portion of the season there. Phillip Rivers wasn't backing anybody off. Um, so you could stack guys in the oh, box. Still not doing that. In. Well, Phillip Rivers is, has been improving as weeks went on here, but, um, you know, it hasn't been good. Teams aren't scared of Phillip Rivers. So, and, and Jonathan Taylor wasn't playing well. He wasn't seeing the field well. He wasn't, he just seemed tight. He seemed like it was too fast for him and he was playing too fast. He hadn't slowed, slowed down enough yet to see what was going on. And you saw, a, bits and pieces of that going on here. And it seems like really all the rookie running backs are starting to kind of come into their own. We're watching Cam Akers tonight. He's coming into his own. We've watched DeAndre Swift come into his own. Antonio Gibson getting better and better. You know, sometimes you talk about the rookie wall, but these guys didn't really have training camps. Running back's a tough position to transition into. There's a lot of things, a lot of responsibilities when you're going from college to um, pro as where it used to be receiver was tough. But now the college game is a lot more like the pro game or the pro game is a lot more like college game, maybe a little easier for uh, some receivers to get into there. Um, So, I mean, Jonathan Taylor's still averaging 13.2 games with a couple of stinkers in there. Like he's got three point, a 3.1 game. He's got a 3.7 game. He's got 7.4. It basically comes down to if you use Jonathan Taylor, if you give him 12 attempts, he's been pretty good. And, and, uh, lo and behold, the guy who couldn't catch the ball and the guy who wasn't a receiver, well, he's top three in uh, yards per reception, top three in yards per route run, and number one catch rate. Hasn't dropped a single fucking ball. So imagine that. <laughs> crazy. This crazy, talented player can learn how to catch a football. It's it's mind-boggling. I don't know. Like, And you look, and you could say, hey, we're worried about Naheen Hines. And I'm not necessarily worried about Naheen Hines, but Naheen Hines has been good. Like there's, he he's deserves to stay on the field when he's out there. Like, I don't agree with last week when they ran fourth and one and put Naheen Hines out there. Like the Colts are getting too cute and Rathman and and Riker are are being trying to be too smart on the field with what's going on. And they just need to, you know, Jonathan Taylor's a guy who gets better as the game goes on. And he just is seeing, seeing him get better as the season goes on playing the running back position. And like you said, big co last week, you saw that nice swing pass uh, where he, he adjust, readjusted to the ball, turned around, caught it and, and, you know, sprinted into the end zone. And there's just been better and better things you're seeing of Jonathan Taylor. So look, I'm, I'm not scared of Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. He did fumble and he lost one fumble. Guess what? Antonio Gibson lost two fumbles and nobody gives a shit. Uh, James Robinson's lost a fumble. Like, Zeke's fumble, lost like, six, you know. Zeke, Zeke had lost five his entire fucking career, and then this year he just he dropped a couple of but like, what are we doing here? That's 
And you know, oh well, JT Scott goes out with COVID, so is he a bust? Like, oh, oh he's, he's a like, bust. Like, like wild shit like that. Like, he's oh, he's not. He, my my the guy that was highly touted these first two picks, Clyde Edwards and Hilaire and and Taylor. I've never seen two players just catch so much shit for really not being that bad out on the field and, and ex- watching game in game out them getting better. Um, and I just don't understand it. So Jonathan Taylor is my guy. I'm sticking with him. Um, you know. All these picks, if you're uh, into it, let us know. If you're not, let us know in the comments. If you like it, let us know in the comments. If you don't like it in the comments, comment below and then go fuck yourself because I don't really care. Just don't thumbs down it. Yeah. All right. Next pick. Leave a comment. Who you guys got? Comment. Is it me? Yeah, well, you're up. I do want to say I, I think we should reiterate those numbers. He, Jonathan Taylor is number one in catch rate, third in yards per catch with 9.3. Doesn't that settle it? Isn't that like – it's a wrap, right? But he's 30th in targets, so maybe they should throw this man the ball some more. And you're right. He was pressing early in that last game. Like that one run where he got – he kind of got skinny and then shot through the, the hole and then carried like eight guys for another 10 yards. Like you saw everything he can do all in one play. And it's like he's getting better. The team's getting yeah. better. Phil's getting better. Like it's just – let me add one more thing. Like is all he a these boss? Other- is he a boss? This bust culture is driving me up a fucking wall. Everybody right. wants to label someone as a bust. I heard Matt Kelly say he's a bust. I heard, I'm like, Let's, what are y'all doing? Out of all of these guys, outside of Clyde Edwards-Alaire, which the argument against Clyde Edwards-Alaire right now is there's a lot of mouths to feed in Kansas City. But outside of all of those guys, all the rookies that we're about to talk about in this top thing, out, outside of maybe Chase Claypool, they're all in very tenuous landing spots. Gibson's in Washington. When's the last time we've been excited about Washington? DeAndre Swift's in Detroit. When's the last time you've been excited about any running back for two years in a row in Detroit? Amir. Um, <laughs> for like one year, I guess. Right. Quick Bell for one year. Theo J.K. Dobbins. Double. Yeah, I think we're all excited about the Ravens, but they're using a bunch of guys, and it seems to not be as great as it maybe once was. And we're not – I think Lamar Jackson is going to be just fine, but like all of a sudden it's it's a lot hard, a little harder for them to operate. The good teams don't have as much trouble with the Ravens all of a sudden. Uh, James Robinson's on the Jaguars. Like, so uh, – Jonathan Taylor's in a situation where he's on the Colts. The offensive line's good. I, I feel good about the front office. I feel good about the situation. I feel good about the head coach. Uh, you know, we do have a Phillip Rivers issue uh, coming up here, so the quarterback's a little hairy, uh, per se. But I trust that the organization will uh, do the right thing. So, again, another point in the uh, JT column of I'm not scared of where he is, what's going on, and the surroundings of him. I, I trust that the organization will do the right thing. You can only say you can't even say that about a third of the teams in the league. Yeah, we thought we could say it about the Eagles before. And the- I thought I thought they were going to give the sh- the ball like crazy to Jonathan Taylor, and I don't love that right now. But hey, it is what it is. They're winning ball games, so. Well, like you said the other day, we, we were talking on the phone, and you were like, uh, "I think we were talking about you were trying to get Eckler from me," um, but the idea of Jonathan Taylor being a rookie and playing with Phillip Rivers. Um, that's it's just what it is. I, we bypassed it. We dismissed it. I didn't even think about it. Um, I, somebody, I, somebody even made uh, something. Of, somebody drew the, the Melvin Gordon comparison on Twitter a couple weeks yeah. back. Well, I mean, it's the same. Um, Reich, Reich, you know, was, Reich was in um, San Diego when, when – um, Melvin, Melvin was there, was and, and the offensive coordinator was there, and Philip Rivers. So, yeah, and and basically Melvin did nothing his rookie year, mm-hmm. uh, and he went for you know, and he, and I remember he fell down in like fifth and sixth uh, startup rounds the next year, and I scooped him on two teams in the startups. Yeah. And look um, at the style of player that the last two years has thrived with Philip Rivers. It's a Naheen Hines type player, sure. That's what sure. Philip River and he needs that little. Hey, I can check it down to this guy, and and they can do that with Jonathan Taylor. But I'm not. I'm not trying to hate on Naheen Hines because he has been. He deserves time on the field. He's been good. So. Agreed. All right, let's go one four. Who you got? One Jay four. Wade. I don't know. I need a drink. I feel like I'm on one one again with like all the options. Like there's so many guys I could take here. You, you could take J.K. Dobbins. You could take Swift. I could take Claypool. 
Uh, but I think I'm just going to, like, play it safe. Unlike the first pick I made, I went a little risky. I'm going to play it safe, and I'm going to take the uh, the guaranteed dynasty asset and get C.D. Lamb yeah. for your pleasure. Um, I, you know, I could have taken him with the 1-1. I mean. Certainly. Um, what he's doing is incredible. Uh, you know, like, he, he basically is who he thought he was. He's a stud, and he's he's – making the same type of plays in the NFL that he was making in college. Just just big catches, going over the middle in traffic, going up and getting balls, high-pointing them. <laughs> and uh, just – just just <laughs> he's making plays in the end zone. He's eating up yak. He's, he's eating up the yak. Um, and and he's, he's killing it from the slot, which he wasn't playing full-time in college, and, and they're asking him to do that here. And, and it's, it's pretty easy for him to get open and – He's he. They're giving him end of rounds, and and he has dropped a few balls. A couple of them were touchdowns. Um, he he he, he dropped that hail mary. He could have caught that hail mary. Could have easily had that hail mary, and then he dropped another one. I think on Thanksgiving Day. Um, but the week before that, he made a ridiculous catch against the Vikings, where he you know twirled in the in the air and just fell back and caught that ball. It was ridiculous. But I think the long term value is amazing here. I think. You know, it's going to maybe take another year, although anything can change, but it looks like Dallas is going to fill this whole thing up again next year. Um, they just got to figure out a way to pay Dak. And, uh, and, and, and so, but the year after that, he could be the number one dude with Dak, and it'd so, be amazing. What um, game did Dak go down in? The four, week four? five, something like that. Yeah. Was Which it? He, he, I think the C- first game with Dalton, he he got peppered, and I think he had a couple down games. But I mean, was it Seattle that that he went down, or was it Cleveland that he went that Dak went down? Do you does anybody remember? I can't remember. I think it was Seattle. Uh, well, I don't remember. I wasn't watching the game. It's a pretty weird tackle. But oh, I got the Steve, I got a text message with you and K, uh, you and Stankers talking about how bad the injury was, and I never even went to look at it. I couldn't. I didn't First the Giants. See it. Didn't even want to see it. So if you look at the, these first couple games with Dak, first game out, six targets, five receptions, 59 yards, zero touchdowns. Uh, next game, uh, nine targets, six catches, 106 yards. Um, next game, seven targets, five catches, 65 yards. And then uh, Cleveland, seven targets, five catches, 79 yards. And then uh, two TDs in that game. So it's like when Dak was out there, he was absolutely crushing with Dak. Like the whole offense, they were scoring forty fucking points a game. Like, yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, he was. He, he very quickly became an every week starter for you if you had him on your team. Yeah, and, and then he's still a solid start even sure. without Dak. So you know, it's not your, the best thing as of as of late, but he's still getting some targets. So right, yeah. he's safe Dak, as it Dak gets. Was, I think Dak was averaging thirty seven points a game and four point per touchdown pass leaks. Right. So and that's I, that. Your your receivers are crushing if your quarterback's averaging thirty seven points a game. Yeah, everybody was eating. I I think I think another reason why to take this and and not even need like a bunch of stats or reasons or examples to back it up is because he he's kind of like a a folk hero. Like he's a cult. He has a cult following, which is very large, and people are he's going to have a long leash. So even if he were grass ass. Even if he regresses next year, it won't even matter. If he gets hurt, people won't care. Like, it, Whereas some players feel like their fantasy relevancy is hanging on by some randomly weird thin string. And yeah, C. well. Lamb this, doesn't yeah. have that. C.D. No. Lamb has a ton of love, and he's going to hold value. So even if you don't like what's going on or, or something bad happens, you're still going to be able to cash out if you want to, and I would just be holding. Yeah. All right. I agree. I agree. I mean, it's, it's a great asset. Like Casey said, he hit the ground running. Folk Hill hero. Agree with Jason. Nothing I need to say about CD Lamb. And, and if you, if this is a real thing and people really got to redraft the, the rookies again, you told somebody they could get CD Lamb at 1 4. I don't think they'd even ask you who went yeah. in front of him. They yeah, no way. They wouldn't even care. They'd say, <laughs> I'm sure people, people are going to be mad that I took Jonathan Taylor at 1 3, but I don't care. That's my guy. I'm going with him. I'm sticking with him. He's still way up there in, in any sort of dynasty startup thing. And, and 
I'm, I'm well, trusted like you in said, how good he there, is. There's there is a really really good chance that even as bad as the hate spin on on uh, Jonathan Taylor to this point, if he finishes with a couple of strong games for the season, there's it's probably more likely than not that he's drafted in the dynasty startup next year before CD Lamb. Mm-hmm. Agree. Like, you know. Yeah, the, even though even though that that list that we you called out earlier is from November and Brian McDowell gets that done the first week of the In new October. month. So yeah. yeah, I mean that that's that's six weeks old. So you got four, you know, at least before last week, you got four or five weeks in a row of people hating on Jonathan Taylor. Mm-hmm. So like that's that's old and maybe see um, I would assume that when the December it maybe even January at this point December's probably already out or and it's just not loaded up on the screen yet but CD Lamb's probably over Jonathan Taylor the next time it pops up but by the time your actual dynasty startup comes back around in the spring um, if if Jonathan Taylor just has a couple of good games on the way out, that's all it takes for the running back. That's all yeah. because because there's only a couple. Right. Exactly. Well, people, that's what I was about to say. It's really supply and demand. It's supply and demand, and the scarcity of anybody who's good and a workhorse and, and able to be super talented and get and get reps is is getting fewer and far between. And there's all sorts of receivers out there scoring points. Oh, um, for sure. So another. Oh, I've been saying that on this. Category. I've been saying on this program for four years straight. Yeah, I, I found a receiver. Yeah, Cole right. Beasley, baby. Big Cole, you're back up. Ah, Cole you Beasley, got. you get Cole Beasley for a fourth round pick right now. Not now, but um, one five, Big Cole. All right, let's go. We got to We got to move it along here. We're running slow uh, as um, per usual. Per usual, I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take Clyde. Just as just, you got a first round pick. So that means he's got the, the team has a fifth year option. So you have at least the next three years with an option to go four more years with Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell came in and muddied it up just a little bit. The, you have the it's the sit, there's a slight Aaron Rodgers factor here to Mahomes doesn't necessarily ever have to hand it off to get the job done. But at the same time on any given week, you could see Clyde Edwards easily get two or three touchdowns from the one because the offense is always down there. Um, in a crazy, you know, COVID season rookie non-existent. You see when the chiefs decide they want to go bull, mm-hmm. you know, Clyde, they did it week one. Cause they didn't want to, they knew that they could handle the team they were playing and they didn't even want to show, they didn't want to take any, they hadn't had any real practices. They didn't, when we talked about that, they didn't want to get um, um, the cheetah hurt and they didn't want Kelsey to get hurt. So they didn't even throw them the ball. Um, until they got in the red zone and threw them touchdown passes. But, and then you saw it a couple weeks ago when they, I forget who they were playing, and they were like, this team is pretty decent against the pass, but they can't stop the run. And here you go. Clyde, bang, 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 bang. You know, and it's just like as, it, as he progresses a little bit I've, next year, I just think he could be, I don't, I, seem, I don't see any reason why Le'Veon Bell's back on the Chiefs next year, and sh- no reason why Clyde can't take a further step up. He's got all the tools in the passing game as well. You get a, get him a season, get him a full regular offseason where even if it's not a regular mm-hmm. offseason because COVID's not going away as soon as the season's over, but the more time and with the program, and I think you get a, a better all-around team-oriented running back who knows the plays, knows the protections, knows yeah. where to be, when to be there. Um, give me give me the guy who's riding with – a, a really talented running back who's really who's riding with uh, Patrick Mahomes for the next four years, um, three guaranteed. Um, I'll take him. Yeah, I mean, he's people are mad, but his rushing yards have been were really good on the season before he missed a little bit of time uh, the last week or so. Um, and he's averaging 14.1 PPR points a game. Clyde Edwards, he's gotten better as the season goes on. When you watch him, he's fun to watch. You're, he's another guy you're kind of holding holding your pants on um, and just seeing what's about to happen. He just He's a little guy, and he rolls off a of contact, and he's, he's a lot more powerful than he looks, and they haven't even unlocked the full complement of receiving game out of him. You do are probably going to have to worry about Damian Williams uh, having some run with the team because I don't I don't know that you know any team is going full on just handing it all to one team one guy f- for the most part outside of one or two franchises, um, but yeah no there's no I I'm down with that I've got no problem taking Clyde there um, people are just if Clyde and, and JT aren't scoring 25 points a game 
because of all the how good they were supposed to be, everyone's mad. And it's like, I'll, by the end of the season, like you said, if each one of them has a couple of good games, that, that 14 and 13 and 15 could easily tick up to 17, 18 points a game. And all of a sudden, oh, look at how good they got at the end of the year. And they're going to stay right at the top of the first round because their scarcity and supply and demand of the position and, and both of them might just be pretty damn good. So Right. Well, he's 21 years old. He's Right now, his 13.8 points a game is better than Kareem Hunt, better than Kenny Drake, better than my boy, everybody's boy, Mike Davis, better than James Conner, better than Jonathan Taylor, better than Ronald Jones, Todd Gurley, Naheen Hines, Miles Sanders, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Chase Edmonds, better than all those guys. So, like, yeah, there's some, you know, there's some ups and downs, but, the, you know, like you plug him in as a mid, he's, he's number 18 points per game on the season. Um, and you take out the guys that have been hurt, Joe Mixon and Austin Eckler and Christian McCaffrey. And, you know, he's basically RB 15 points per game on the season of somebody you could actually use. Yeah. And I mean, everybody's going to have a stinker from time to time. It's just, it's yeah, pretty I mean, hard to get out of the season without having a couple bad games here and there ton, for whatever ton of, reason. Ton of mouths to feed there. And then they don't, you know, I feel like at times Andy Reid wants to show Patrick Mahomes off and say, look what I created, look what I did, and I signed him forever. So let's let's blow the league up because he's been a little bit down on, on the overall numbers from like that first year he put up a ridiculous line. But, I mean, you know, you haven't seen Clyde Unleashed. Like you said, he's only got 30 targets – or, sorry, he's only got 30 catches. Um, I think – he wasn't asked to pass protect at all at LSU. He was running a route on like every single snap that I could find. And that's, it's a, you're seeing that with a lot of these rookies. They're having trouble learning how to pass protect in this NFL league where all these blitzes are coming from who knows where and they're disguised. And, and it's just, a, it's a whole different ball game. So I think he's still kind of getting up to speed and you can see him pressing at times and it hasn't worked out for him on the goal line. So everybody's really mad. But I mean, he still he still looks just as good as he did in college. And when with that offense spread out and all these playmakers around him, all he has to do is plant the foot and make one cut, and he has enough burst to to score from a, a decent yeah. amount, a decent ways out. So and he's got enough sh- shake and and power to to do everything. I just right definitely just can't argue it. with with that pick there. So yeah. All right. So where are we at? One six. I guess that's back to back that's to you. Me. Yeah. All right. Well, this is probably the toughest pick of the draft so far, at least for me. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Yeah, I don't know what to uh, do. A couple, of, couple of guys that you could take here. You could take Claypool. You could take James Robinson, and I'm not going to argue with you. You could take D. Higgins. I'm not going to argue with you. Um, but for me, it's down to J.K. Dobbins and Swift. Uh, coming into this, I had, um, I had J.K. Dobbins definitely ahead of Swift, and I had Akers ahead of Swift just because of the landing spot on the Rams. Now, it does look like the Rams are getting a little more comfortable with Akers. I'm still not ready to slide them all the way up this high, um, whether it's recency bias or process over results. Maybe I should just be sticking with it. Um, and I do really want to take J.K. Dobbins here. Um, DeAndre Swift has been really coming around and looking great. He's had five, four or five targets in pretty much every game but one. Um, he's in PPR. Where is he at here? He's averaging 14.2, uh, points a game. The biggest problem is, is like I said earlier, he's in Detroit. There's a regime change now. Um, name the last, I love carry on Johnson. I still love carry on Johnson. Uh, but name the last running back that you wanted for more than a year and a half in Detroit. Name him. You can't. Yeah. Like, and the problem is last week when they're last Last week when they were throwing at Carry On Johnson, he looked great. Yeah, and it's just two, like you maybe know. it was two weeks ago. I, I was watching and there was like uh, Carry On Johnson was they had he had like sixty passing yards in the first half, and then yeah, and it's it's, just I mean that's that's what, that's what Swift can do uh, as well. And and you know they're talking about maybe just blowing this whole thing up. Maybe maybe Stafford has an out in his contract. Maybe they they're probably not going to cut him. I would assume that they would you know, kind of sign and trade him or do, I'm not a capologist, but if I had to make sense of it all, I would say that would be more likely what you would do is try to get something for Stafford. Um, but, you know, they could blow it all up and then it could be who the hell's playing quarterback. Well, who's the coach coming in now? If Eric the enemy comes in, that's great, but who knows who it's going to be. Um, and it's just, and it is the lions. The lions can't have nice things. Now that's not a reason to necessarily completely stay away from, from somebody, but you know, then you look at the JK Dobbins side of things and it's, 
you know, the Ravens, and we're all excited about that. Looks like Mark Ingram, I don't know what the contract situation is, but seems like he could be, you know, J.K. Dobbins trending up to being the guy there. But how much longer do we do this Lamar thing if it, if it doesn't get them to the playoffs, you know, next year and this year? You know, if people start to figure it out a little bit and it starts to maybe unravel. Greg Roman has a tendency to get stale in his offensive play calling uh, scenario, and that's seemingly what it has. We, it happened in San Francisco. It didn't even – happened in Buffalo with Tyrod and they didn't even get off the they, they shit canned him and moved on. Um, Ravens have done a great job. They always do a great job of surrounding the talent and doing what the talent needs. I like JK Dobbins more than I like Deandre Swift from a talent standpoint. Um, but I think I, <sighs> I think I gotta, I think I gotta take Swift here. I think I'm gonna take Swift one six. Please let the lions get the enemy, please. Yeah. I, got, so, I got three words when it comes to DeAndre Swift. Curvy linear movement. <laughs> <laughs> drink, bitches. <laughs> I'm out of drinks, but I'll drink water. All right, 1-7, who you got? Was back to me? Uh, All right. uh yeah. Let me let me put uh let me no. put Swift yeah. in here. Yeah, it's up. It's up. It's you're up. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I should I should I should probably just take J.K. Dobbins, but I mean J.K. looked awesome, and and J.K. is just looking better and better. He looks like I I I I feel like I messed that up, and I should have taken Dobbins, but like they they want to <laughs> they they've been trying to get Gus Edwards involved, and, and he's looking just fine and, and getting what's blocked. And I like Gus, I like the Gus bus as much as anybody, but then they just like all right, well let's he needs a breather now. Let's give Dobbins a ball, and it's just like just you know just like. Just like he did in college, you know, just like he did against Clemson in the national championship. He just looks fast and fluid and hard to stop. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, they, they did get right against the Dallas Cowboys offense, and I, I didn't track, you know, Lamar Jackson's rushing and whatnot. I can't necessarily back it up, but it feels like he, he made a more determined uh, effort to run this past game and that worked out for him and, and that yeah and I think you're gonna see that game. now it's like hey we gotta win it's time to it's time to just go do do go do your thing man like we we need to win all every single game here so do whatever you gotta do to make sure we win these ball games and then when he's playing like that now it's when right. the running back sure. is really gonna crush for sure right and you know Ingram looks fine but he's out of there after this year and I mean I guess I think they can is that confirmed back I think they can bring him back for five million, but they don't have to. So I don't know why you. They ain't bringing. They ain't paying. He's thirty-one, but they ain't paying him no five million dollars next year. Not with J.K. Right. Dobbins and, and Gus Edwards. Right. So yeah, I don't know. They probably don't even have Gus Edwards under contract, but. But I'm saying he'd come back yeah. for a lot less than five mil. Oh sure. Right. And then man, I don't know. It's 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 so it's either between. Damn it! Uh, I should have taken Dobbins. It's between Dobbins, or Claypool. I mean. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I I feel like I should take Claypool. I mean, he looks like a, a a dominant physical specimen out there who can who can get you forty points in the game. And and there's not that many guys. I mean, that list is growing, which is a testament to these these rookies in and these last few classes and just the overall talent in the NFL <laughs> and the, and the way they like to play it overall and how it's geared towards offense and all that. So that, but still, there's not too many people that can score four touchdowns in a day and get you forty points. Um, and, and, and besides that, like the, besides the beastliness and the downfield acumen and all that, he just on the sideline is where I've been really impressed with him, his ability to drag that toe and, and not jump unnecessarily and use his whole frame to make these ridiculous sideline catches. I know it sucks that Roethlisberger is kind of old and the Steelers seem to be a, just a great organization. I mean, them boys know what the hell they're doing and, and they brought Deontay Johnson in, and they don't. And then, and, and James Washington is coming into his own. And he's making plays, and they're distributing it everywhere. They got a cheap Ebron who's still, still really young and crushing it um, for the most part as far as tight end tight ends go. Um, and so maybe they don't have to bring Juju back. I don't think it really matters. Um, Claypool just looks ridiculous. I don't know if I should I just take the running back. Let me, let me get Claypool. Fuck it. Let me let me take Claypool. Um, let me get the wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, I'm not upset about that. The only thing that gives me pause is, is Roethlisberger. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think but, he's, I think he comes back for another Pittsburgh. Year. Like you said, it's a good. It's just like we talked about with the Colts. Pittsburgh is one of those organizations that's just stalwarts and and being just always well run and yeah. We'll figure it out. I mean, it's been three years now since we started the the life A B after Breeze. Um, so that means that Ben Roethlisberger, you know, Roethlisberger is three years older as well. Uh, I think it's a very legitimate concern, um, but. It, you know, Chase, especially because he just had Tommy John. Like, yeah, yeah. Ch- Chase, so he's been feeling uh, better than he has ever. Mm. Chase's physical skill set and is what he walks onto the field with that size sure. that you just can't teach. Yeah, the he's size probably pretty mean, close to quarterback. It doesn't matter. Probably fairly quarterback involved. Just yeah. probably just because of what he walks out there with is you know six four six five. Monster of a man, 238 pounds or something like that. Oh, um, Dick. Yeah, boy, did I miss out on this guy, man. I totally uh, – Yeah, we all we all did. We all did, yeah. for sure. I don't I think – I got a uh, I gotta biggest jumper, for sure. That. I, don't think, I don't think being upset with Ben's age is, is a problem here. I think it's very, very uh, obvious that he's he, – he don't have a ton left in the tank. He looks good this year, but we'll see. Um well, I always like feel like he's an offensive Jay. line, and and they got mad weapons around him, and he gets the ball out quick. Yeah, he he looks a little uh, what is it, bow legged? Is that his knees are like touching all the time? Something weird. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Uh, op, anti <laughs> bow, opposite of bow legged. So I'm up at one eight, right? You are. Um, I mean, obviously the pick is J.K. Dobbins, but it's hard not to take James Robinson here just because what I could trade him for today. Um, fair enough. It, you know, I, you got funky leagues that may or may not. You, I mean, we're doing this. We're going into week fourteen now. Um, but when we were doing this mock last week, uh, you know, the playoffs hadn't started yet. But like, you can get. <coughs> I've seen. I didn't see the trade go down because it, it didn't get worked out. But I know that somebody offered to a first rounder that this year in the next coming draft in the first rounder in 2022 for James Robinson. And I was like, what do you do? What do you mean? You didn't accept that? Yeah, and obviously, James. And, and but that was a month ago. And when as far as w- when that trade yeah. almost, almost went down and, and he's even been better since as far as just consistently still getting touches and, and catching balls and, and getting touch rush and touchdowns and putting up yards. And I mean, I think he's top five in the NFL and just straight rushing yards. Um, I could be wrong, but I uh, just kind of grabbed that out of memory from seeing it on TV two weeks ago or something. But James Robinson's I mean, he's got 968 output. yards. He's yeah, it got to be way up there. Um, his, his actual like numbers, his statistical output has been, really 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 a badass and so you it's hard for me not to say just his name just because i know what i can get back of course a ton of people really love jk dobbins uh like in the casey myers mold so i know i could get a ton for case from casey for a jk dobbins trade either so like if you're and kind of going back to what casey said at the beginning if you uh, eight or nine guys here you can just toss them up and we still got t higgins and jerry judy and brian and i yoke to talk about you know so yeah you got the entire first round here where you it, once hindsight being 2020 there's not a bad pick Mm-mm. it's just who you taking and yeah. so i think i mean sign me up for long term of jk dobbins but right this second i i, I have no problem saying my pick right now at one eight is james robinson and because i could plug him in next week for uh, yeah. production and i can trade him for potentially two first round picks and and take advantage of of the situation right now fair enough i i think the only reason that i'd stay i'd probably stay away from from robinson for maybe two maybe even three more picks and it's i, I can't argue with you it's just undrafted free agent again it's jacksonville it's a regime change. Those guys, the guys who come in have nothing to do with James Robinson. And I'm not hating on James Robinson. He's been good. He's been great. Um, he's a league winner this year. Um, and, yeah. you know, when you look at him on the field, he's not like he's not like some of those other guys that we talked about where you're like he's bursting off the page and he can take it to the house. He's doing great things on the field. He just doesn't, he doesn't quite have that specialness to him necessarily like some of these other guys did ahead of him and, and J.K. Dobbins uh, does, in my opinion. 
Um, and then, you know, it's undrafted free agent, it's regime change. It's, there's probably a decent chance that the next people will come in and bring another running back in. And, and the reason that you're, that James Robinson is, if you give any of these rookie running backs, the usage that James Robinson is getting, they're going to fucking crush. Uh, this sure. is the whole reason why you were drafting Leonard Fournette in the position that you were drafting Leonard Fournette in, because last year he was the, the RB six and this year, James Robinson's right at the RB six. Um, this is, this is what you wanted. You know, you could take, Give a little less, take a little more with with Fournette. However, you want to chop it up. And a lot of people just hate him because he was a high drafted running back. Um, and you know, the next regime comes in and they bring in a third or fourth round running back, and you're just there's. I just don't think you're really going to see the output that you're seeing right now from James Robinson, basically being one of the only, you know, one a not even one a he's just one there is no there's not even a b behind him really um and just the usage is crazy like just philip Lindsay comes to mind it's like all right philip Lindsay was absolutely crushing on the scene i don't think he was quite doing what robinson was, is doing probably wasn't getting the usage that robinson was getting um but he was at one point in december of 2018 up at like adp 40 in uh um DLF ADP, which uh, currently uh, is where Mike Evans is being drafted uh, and right around where T Higgins is being drafted. So, um, you know, it's just Antonio Gibson is behind that at 43. Jerry Judy's at 44 and overall ADP for DLF. So that, that would be my case against James Robinson. It's not that I dislike James Robinson. And I understand the point that you were saying, like, hey, the value that you can get for this guy right now because he is crushing and he is a league winner is is outstanding. Um, oh, sure. I'm taking him. I'm taking him up at one eight right now, and I'm tra- trading him tomorrow. Yeah. Like I've, I've seen the things on Twitter is like, oh, if you're if you're still fading James Robinson, it's not fading James Robinson, but I, you know, like you just said, Philip Lindsay. Every single time for the last two years that Philip Lindsay's name came up, I was like, trade him away. Trade him away every single time. And then time. you have Adrian, you have Arian Foster's who came in and was an undrafted free, but it was it Foster. Looked little, it looked a little different. Foster, than, not Foster's. Yeah. There's never been another. I, if you can name me a second guy who was here more than a year and a half after not being drafted, I think, I think like, you it can was, go back to the Broncos and and the Mike Shanahan's of bringing an undrafted free agent. A backs. Ruben Drones, those kind of got Mike and Mike somebody. I mean, those, but they were here for one year and then it was the next one. And there was yeah, the I next don't know if, Ter- if Terrell Davis and and those guys. I don't know if they were. You know, I don't know. Anyway, but that's you're right, and that's and I'm not saying James Robinson's going to fade away because he looks plenty good, but it's the usage right now that makes it so Lindsay. tantalizing. Um, and and you know, a different regime came in, and a year later, after the after the first year that they were there, they decided to bring Melvin Gordon in, and it's you know muddied up the whole thing, and they bring in another guy, and it could get really muddy with Robinson. Could still be a, a good RB two. Um, for you, but I just the value right now. I'm, I'm going to pick a couple guys over him. So one eight is off the board. That's James Robinson, and we we're at one nine. Who's up? I think it's uh, I think it's you. But so so big code. That's definitely who you're going with. Um, and then you know I agree with Casey. I can't really argue against it. It does feel like it's too good to be true. Um, it's felt that way all year. It's gotten less of that feeling as we've gone on, and it can just continues to crush even when <laughs> even when people were saying, "Oh, his schedule's going to get schedule's really going to hard. get harder." And then he, yeah, lost I mean, we did a whole segment on him about how you should just keep him and, and just trade him in the offseason because I don't think his value is going down, right? Right. And then, I well, mean, then, you, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Big Cole. Well, yeah, I don't. If we if you tell me I can't make any trades, like I want J.K. Dobbins on my team, yeah, yeah, like I'm taking J.K. Dobbins over over him all day long, but I, I, I can. When I, when we did this mock draft, I was like, I gotta go Edwards, and that was again, I was you know, a week or two ago, 10 days ago, Dobbins still. And Dobbins really came on again last week. Again, it's the Dallas defense, and they're trying to just get it done. But, and you know, it's just – and then Lamar Jackson, again, when Lamar Jackson decides, hey, we got to win, go run around, do what you got to do. Yeah. It's towards the end of the year. Who cares if you get hurt? We got to win. If you don't win, we're out anyway kind of thing. Yeah. And then the running backs, the lanes get wide open for the running backs. So, we could, Dobbins could absolutely cross the last – Dobbins could kill it the last month of the season. Yeah. And we sit here right now in the third quarter of this game with the, uh, the uh, Patriots and the Rams, and Cam Akers got 134 rushing yards. Oh, he's absolutely crushing it. Murder yeah. it. Um, Man, that's crazy. I, I, I would take 
uh, I'm, my, my pick is James Robinson because I know what I'm going to do with him right away and I'm going to capitalize. But I, and I'm, I'm not I'm kind of just saying because I don't think that the offers that I saw in one of our leagues, I don't think you get those offers for J.K. Dobbins right now unless you get a chance to offer him up to K- Casey. You know, yeah. and every and even even a player, even a team that might really love J.K. Dobbins might not have the firepower to pay you what or, yeah. or the willpower. You know, so yeah, I think uh, the, I think the, the only guy. The consistent production that James Robinson's getting you right now gives you the ability to basically trade him to anybody. Everybody yeah. needs a running back, and 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 obviously Bingo. late there in the season go. now, nothing's happening. You can't. It's playoffs already, so this is a moot point. But the thing is, is going into the playoffs, everybody needs a running back. Especially the contending teams want a running back, and you get you play in a fun league where the bad teams play for the first round pick for the number one pick. Now that they need a running back too. You know, so there's all, <laughs> yeah. all kind of fun, fun ways to get rid of a running back in week 10, 11, 12. Sure. Um, and James Robinson in, in that, in that stretch, nine, 10, 11 people are like, Oh, I'm gonna make the playoffs. I got to get a running back and they'll give you whatever you need for a, a real, somebody like James Robinson has been crushing all year. Yeah. Yeah. I think right. it's, it's, it's a little more um, of a day trading type aspect, which sometimes you can get, in trouble with, but I also can't argue with the pick in general. If that's, you know, for listeners, if they're like, yeah, well, why wouldn't you take James Robinson? He's look, he hasn't looked special, like you said, Casey, but he has looked really good. The contact balance is, is exceptional. He looks quick, definitely quicker than fast, but still quick. And then he's been really good in the receiving game. The ball sticks in there when he's targeted. He's got 42 catches, I believe, which is sixth best. Mm-hmm. Big Coe, he's got the third most rushing yards. And then one interesting thing, I, w- I, w- I watched him mic'd up with him, and he didn't say a fucking word. All you hear the whole time is just, yeah. just blowing people up. Even the coach clickety comes clack, over to him. Clack. The coach comes over to him on the sideline. He's like, you giving him anything to work with? And he like doesn't say anything. And he's like, because the boy said – James wasn't going to say nothing, and he just he doesn't he lets his game speak for for yeah. himself. I yeah. like the guy, man. I'm just I just the worries me, uh, you know, just that the regime change. And if it was if they, if they were going to hang around, if, they, if we just got that head coach and we were hanging around for another couple of years, I'd be a lot less worried. But I just feel like there's going to be a lot of turnover in what's going on, and they're not they're not going to be as tied to James Robinson as these next people are, and might want another guy. So yeah. All right, easy pick here for me. I'm going Dobbins, so and we don't need to talk about it anymore. And then, Jay Wayne, you're up, and I think that's an easy pick for you. The only other guy I think that's left that might warrant uh, a day trade with a quick couple of first-round picks is probably who Jay Wayne's taking right here. So I'm taking I'm taking J.K. Dobbins. Jay Wayne, who are you taking? Who do you, who do you think I should, I should take? T. Higgins. Here? Yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, I, mean with, I think T. Higgins – with the way that Akers has been playing recently, and then add on tonight, I mean, he, Akers had a great game last week. Yeah, last week, but it's just it's not what T. T Higgins is is right now. Like he he he's the guy who's been through the whole season and then has had okay games with uh, the backup, and he's tied to Burrow for years. So I think he's just the next safest asset that a lot of people are loving right now. So I think you could that's an easy flip or an, or a hang on to with your grubby little hands so yeah well as you can see i got orange and purple all over my body and so yeah i'll definitely take t higgins here um i mean shit you can make an argument for t higgins in any of those spots ahead of me that i've uh, that we've 100%, already drafted 100 um, percent. what this bitch this dude's been out there in his own right he's been murking like he's just, he's averaging over 14 points a game um and, and and when you go back and watch some of the connections that him and burrow had together it's just it's outrageous. It's simply unguardable. Like there, there's some of these plays. There's no separation. There's no anything but great ball placement and and physical. Like his physical body being the separation and making a ridiculous contested catch. And like some of those plays they were connecting on and the and the, the, the what's the word I'm looking for? Just the connection they had is unguardable. And and he he can gain separation, but he doesn't have to. That he just uses that big frame to to crush these contest, contested situations. Everything looks fluid, just like it did in mm-hmm. college. He looks huge, but he's just moving around there so so agile, like that he doesn't look that big that uh, until he goes to make the catch. Um, he's he's a versatile guy. Twenty one percent of his snaps have been in the slot, and for him to just he got a, they, they eased him in a little bit, and then all of a sudden it was just week after week. T Higgins was a every week starter. Yeah, by AJ Green, QT Higgins. Here we go. 
Right. Sure. And, and I mean, and AJ Green's on that and that short on that one year deal, but they're not even they're not even looking his are, way. Like they said not, he's gone. It doesn't matter. They don't care. Right. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't care. And he's out of there. Right. I yeah. Mean, I mean, like you said, Jay, you could have done you could have pulled the trigger on T. Higgins. This is pick ten here. This is only the fourth wide receiver. And if if Chase Claypool doesn't have one game with four touchdowns, it's unlikely you're taking Chase over T. Higgins at any point in this ro- in, a, in a rookie draft. Or maybe if um, Burrow doesn't have an ACL that has a little bit of extra damage that you're missing, maybe he could be up to a year. You know, maybe that. Yeah, and agree he's just with continue, that. Continue and having to do two or three more games where he's just been absolutely just Chase, getting better and better. Yeah, T. T-, T Higgins has been ridiculous, but Chase is forty. I mean, I, I'll bet anybody right now a hundred bucks that Chase Claypool doesn't have another four touchdown game in his career. Like that's an easy bet. I mean, I'm I'm the favorite to win that bet. I'll bet it ten times in a row up to a thousand dollars to anybody that wants to call me. <laughs> like it's, it's, he's not going to get four touchdowns again, but he had it and he had it early in his career, which mm-hmm. puts that sparkle on his name. And he's oh, huge. Yeah. I mean, he's even bigger than he, you know. He's like twice as size of T Higgins. And everybody it, it, loves the Steelers too. So I feel like right, he's already so a cult he's hero. Just got that, right. He's just got that like glimmer on his name, but like T Higgins and, is and he's has a good Catholic a, boy. He's a, he's an absolute stud and he's like Canadian too, so you know he's a, a nice guy. You you could you could make this call a long time ago for sure. I agree with that. Ooh, yeah, football, I mean eh? I probably sh- I probably should have taken him at one seven. What am I doing? Idiot. Blue. All right, who's up? Me. Yes, sir. Uh, no, Big Co's up. T Higgins. Uh, one more quick thing is like I said with the Burrow thing, there could be some. De- again, we talk about it all the time. Patience is not what dynasty owners love. There is a little bit of extra damage to the Joe Burrow injury. Now we're in a space and time where there's not too many. Co- like fucking Alex Smith had 17 surgeries. He's on the field. Like uh, there's, you know, we're not in that space where he's probably not going to come back right. But there could be people who are not th- like, oh man, it's going to be a year, and there could be people who are impatient and you could get a slight discount on T Higgins right now. I'm not saying everybody, but there are certainly people out there who will be worried about the quarterback's ACL and the fact that maybe you're going to lose a whole another half a year of production from, from T Higgins. So you might be able to, you know, get, get just a slight discount on them. Anyway, I like it. Up. I like Go it. Ahead. Um, next pick, next player off the board, Brandon. I yuck. Mm. Took him, took him right from me. Scooped, broke a when major rule of draft. When we got, when we did the mock draft, I let uh, I took um, Jerry Judy here just just to play with Casey's emotions. You had every opportunity to take a uh, yoke boy. You should have took him, but I got him on my team. Yeah, and I mean, again, fuck. I mean, you say what you want. Ayuk could be right up there with any of these receivers, too, the way he's looked out on the field, man. He just looks dirty. Every time. He's so good. This player is so, so good. And one of the things early um, when they actually were got teams back together before the season started, maybe week one or week two, but um, uh, the coaches said that Ayuk knows how to practice. Yeah, and because because Herm Edwards was his college coach, mm-hmm. and and they got a bunch of former players and former NFL coaches at ASU, and they were like, that was one of the reasons that first of all it was one of the reasons that why that um Kyle Shanahan said he liked him to begin with and why they wanted to draft him, but then they're the once they got him and once they got him in the they didn't have camp, but once they actually got together as a team and was playing and practicing and stuff, they were like, this is what we were thought we were getting. We got what we thought we were getting. He's, he's a professional. He showed up as a rookie ready to be a professional NFL player. He's about it. And uh, yeah. because he, because of his college coach and everything that Herb Edwards put around him. And, um, and I have a lot of Brandon Ayuk from rookie drafts. <laughs> and then I made trades this year in season to get, get more as well to get more kind of in and out of the bring, lineup covid hamstrings easy, bring it easy acquire um i think it's i great. think i saw a roto world article where he's over the last four games averaging 20 points a game he's averaging uh 28 percent uh target share over the last couple of games like he's oh, target share he's he's absolutely Ooh. crushing it he looks fantastic out there the wings he's a he's pterodact- not the biggest he's guy a pterodactyl. yeah he's not the biggest guy but that wingspan oh. is ridiculous and he can just pluck so it and there has they haven't yet to get all of their skill position players on the field at the same time in that offense, uh, which, you know, could, could be a little troublesome to Ayuk because, 
it's not a super high volume offense passing wise, but they, they, they manufacture touches for their good player and good luck guarding that offense when Kittle Debo uh, and Ayuk are out on the field and, and, you know, they got a healthy run game. Uh, yeah. So that's a smash pick. Love the Ayuk. I'm going to take Cam Akers here. That's an easy pick for me. Um, now we could go six months from now. We could go and a year from now. Either one of those two. And Cam Akers could easily be in the top four of this draft, number one in this draft. We know. Look at Jerry Judy. That's why this is great. For, for sure. Exactly. And, and the you know, I had him preseason ranked above Swift because he was going to the Rams. Um, and I like the, the prospect of the fact that he was going to the Rams and the Rams do like to hang their hat on and build their offense a little bit more about around the run game where we see the lions, you know, typically have struggled to find that identity. Um, and it's been a little bit of a slow build here. Acres hadn't lo- didn't look good in the beginning of the season. Acres did not look good in the beginning of the season, but he's come around in the last three or four games. He's been slowly peeling those layers back and he looks really good. Uh, right now, it looks like the, the the prospect that everybody was hoping for him to be. Um, only slight concern is they do have Henderson there, um, and it maybe maybe uh, I talked about this with the patrons a little. Yeah, I think today you know they were asking about him. And I was like, oh yeah, you, you know you should go, you should try to go get him if you can. Uh, but maybe he is does have a little bit of uh, maybe I don't want to give one guy you know a, a large amount of load because of what he saw go down with Todd Gurley where he had some injuries and and used the shit out of him. And then all of a sudden the guy you built your offense around is no longer available, Uh, but probably a silly reason. So Cam Akers, uh, 112. Let's move through this second round, boys. All right. Well, for some reason, I I don't feel like amazing about it, but I guess I got to take Jerry Judy. At, uh, yeah, well, it's just the situation that they're. I mean, like if you you put him in a situation where the quarterback can feed him, and he's probably eaten. Oh you, yeah, dude, and, and, and mean, there's been times when he has eaten this year, you know. Right, and he, he really hasn't been all that bad uh, oh, until recently. If a, ball, but, if a ball got close to him, he was real. I mean, if to get Jerry Judy at two one, you should be or two whatever the pick it is one, now two one. Yep. Yeah, you should you should be doing backflips. Like that, uh, yeah, right. This I can I can do backflips into into water. <laughs> right, this second he's got to be called a dynasty stash because Drew Lock. Um, I, I wanted to exactly, take Mims. That, that's what I wanted to do, but I, I'll take Jerry Judy. Oh, uh, even worse. Um, but that's you want Mims because your boy Trevor Lawrence is about to be throwing him the ball, and I can't blame you for that. I, but, I don't um, know. I don't. I don't know. I can't confirm or deny whether that's going to be the case or not. But Mims is a is a beast in his own right. That's why I want Mims. And yeah. and you, kids, go go get him right now before he blows up and, and scores like two or three touchdowns in one game because it could definitely happen. And he's out there making it happen. But he's anyway. not playing this week, so you got another week. Right, he's out. So yeah, just even more. I guess you can't. I guess there's not really trading. I guess if you're all out of the playoffs, you could be trading with each other, depending on your league settings. But oh man, she got you, Big Co. Two 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 Big Co. Um, I mean, I guess. Uh, I could stick with Pittman here. Uh, Pittman's look really good, <laughs> given opportunity. Um, Missed some time. Phillip Rivers, if he plays against a good defense, it could get any pressure at all. He's not great. Um, but he had a nice little string here. You look back on Phillip Rivers last month, and he's come alive. Not a coincidence that he's playing teams that cannot really get pressure. Um, I, I, I don't think I can be upset with Pittman, which is, again, Pittman, Mims, um, I yuck. Uh, these T Higgins was back here in the draft when we, during the during the real rookie draft before we saw him play, just because of the stacked class in itself, which is why I was trading back and don't have any Justin Jefferson because we're loaded back here. I mean, it's mm-hmm. uh, these are these are good players. Um, so happy to get Pittman here. Um, it just you can't go wrong. Yeah. All right. Well, that's two 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 is Pittman. Two, three, I'm going to take Mims. Um, like you said, Jay Wayne, he's got out on the field and he's been he's been nothing short of really good on a really bad team. Um, he looks explosive out there. He looks big. He looks nasty. He looks fast. Um, he's catching things that come his way uh, with Flacco and with Darnold. Uh, he's had one, two, week nine, week 11, and week 12. He averaged 10 points a game. Um, he's averaging basically nine points a game because he had a 6.2 in there. Uh, but he's come out and he's just automatically been 
good without really even playing much. He missed most of the season. He's played seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 12, 13, and about to miss another game. Um, he's everything as advertised that we liked. He looked like he's showing up and showing out for everything that we thought he could be. Um, and, and he does have those ridiculous wheels that showed out on the combine. And there is a really good chance that uh, Trevor Lawrence is the guy that will be throwing his way. I like Joe Douglas, the GM. Gase will probably be gone. I really like Joe Douglas, the GM. I, I've got a lot of faith in him to actually turn the Jets around. And the consolation prize for the Jets not getting Trevor Lawrence is getting Justin Fields. And, uh, you know, I'm okay with that too. So, sure. Um, Denzel Mims, 2 3. <laughs> uh, back to me again. Back to you. So this is the point where, I mean, I guess I'm – if you want to take a quarterback before this point, I can't sure. really get mad at you. And if I you want to take – Yeah. If you want to take a quarterback here, go for it. Um, I, I, I could easily take Justin Herbert. Or, um, I guess he's, he's moved ahead of, of Joe Burrow at this point, although you can make a case for either one of those guys long term. Um, I, Let me I think I'm, so. I, I mean, given given the Joe Burrow's knee injury in this spot right this second in this rookie draft right here, if you had it to redo, I don't think you can take. Uh, I, I mean, Herbert. Even, even I mean, if Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow had come back and be Joe Montana before he's better than Joe Burrow. I mean, jo, uh, Justin Herbert, just because Justin Herbert's been so dang good too. Herbert uh, Burrow really got beast, zeroed but, by the Patriots, but yeah. Well, that's Bill Belichick's twenty-two and zero against rookie quarterbacks. He does that to you. Um, I think uh, – I, I mean, I want Joe Burrow to be great. I want Joe Burrow to come back healthier, better than ever. But, like, Casey, it's, it's the and more problems in that knee. I think you're doing it wrong if you take Joe Burrow over Justin Herbert in a startup next year. Before you see him back, I mean, because you're not – it's just so many quarterbacks anyway. Like, what do you do? If you take Justin Herbert, you get it wrong. You pick up Matt Stafford off the waiver wire. You'll be okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, maybe maybe he's. Uh, so what are you gonna do, Jay Wayne? I'm gonna take Jalen Rager. Woo! Yeah. Didn't see that coming. No. Mm-mm. I mean, he's not that uh, far off. I didn't jump him up above too many people here. No. And and the, and this is a big fall for him uh, from fall. where he was in the beginning of Good. the. Season. And Good. Uh, I mean, who thought that the Eagles were gonna be a dumpster fire? You know, not too many people. The Eagles. Nobody. Um, but I mean, this guy. <laughs> This guy could have had two long bombs in week one, but, you know, Wentz is a bust, so he overthrew him and underthrew him on, on the two <laughs> catches that, that he could have. Is, is Wentz a bust? Do you guys think Wentz a bust? Not to, like, start a 30-minute conversation. But. We don't have time for this right now. <laughs> but anyways, um, I, think, I think he's proved in limited time that his skill set translates to the NFL and that the talent is certainly there. Uh, you just got to hope that these uh, Eggles get it figured out. Maybe they bring Nick Foles in next year. I don't know. Probably probably moving off of Carson Wentz. Maybe Jalen Hurts is is uh, is their answer. But, I mean, Rager, he looks he looks super fast and electric out there, especially with the ball in his hands. Um, that punt return he had against the Packers was, was all you need to see in that regard. And, uh, I mean, I think I still believe in the talent of this guy and just because he got hurt. He's and hasn't been able to show out like some of these other rookies have. I, I also don't think it'll take much for him to get that value boosted back up. And um, so I'm going to pass on the quarterback in this mock because I, I don't, I, my theoretical team doesn't need a quarterback here. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take Jalen Rager. So that's, it's over to you, Big Co. So Rager at two, four. So we're on two, five, Big Co, who you got? I mean, I got to go Justin Herbert. I, and, like, if you need a quarterback, then I don't think uh, there's – you know, when I took Pittman, I could easily take Justin Herbert just because there's so many wide receivers. Like, I like the idea of having um, Pittman on my team. My, I love the idea of having Pittman on my dynasty team. I love the idea of having Mims on my dynasty team, Rager on my dynasty team. But if you need a quarterback, if you need somebody – and, I, I, man, I don't think anybody – He's on quarterbacks as bad as me. I started late, I started late round quarterback with John Kitna back in two thousand two. Bo, <laughs> don't tell to me about late quarterback. Like I started yeah. that shit, and you Casey pee, was in. You, pee, you peeing on quarterbacks? Is that what you said? But Jay, 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 Casey was in that league with me when I took John Kitna. Um, I could tell you what year it was. It was a Derek Anderson. Yeah, year I was about to say Derek Cleveland Anderson. Yeah, oh, because yeah. John Kitna got hurt, and I had to pick up Derek Anderson, and he took me to the championship. I think, and actually, Derek Anderson took me to the playoffs 
playoffs. I think I made another roster swap, and in the playoffs, I think Kurt Warner finished it up, and Kurt Warner won me to won me the championship. I think, um, but you know, it's sometimes you get you get in that home league where you're yeah. not quite as your 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 players your friends around you in the league aren't quite as liberal as some of those uh, FFPC leagues and you get a deeper bench and all of a sudden there's no quarterbacks. You, you, there is no pickup. Of a st- you can't stream because the only one out there is like Kyle Allen, the backup that's playing this week, you know? Um, so if you need a quarterback, sometimes you get stuck and you actually have to pay for one because all your friends are idiots and they won't trade you because they got four <laughs> and they think they need them. Like, yeah. you know, so Sometimes you can't just be like, oh, well, I got to take Jalen Rager here or I got to take Mims or I got to take Pittman. Like, if you obviously, again, next year in the rookie draft, you don't really know who's good and who's not. I'm telling you this based on the fact that we've seen some really good rookie quarterback play this year, but I'm taking Justin Herbert. All right. Fair enough. Um, so that's, what was that, 2 5? 2 6. Uh, I'm going to take Joe Burrow. Um, I'm going to slap him on my IR spot so I can pick up somebody like uh, a Donald Parham and stash him uh, at the end of my bench and feel so good about it. Put him right uh, into the, the old uh, AAFL or XFL star. He crushed it. He's had a couple of opportunities there with the, uh, with the Chargers. Uh, I really like end of the bench stash, stash with that tight end. He's, he's big and fast, and uh, the Chargers would be retarded to let – or stupid to let – sorry, I know that's not a PC word anymore – uh, stupid to, uh, stupid to, uh, let Hunter Henry go, but maybe, uh, I like, I like the prospect of Parham Henry's on a one year deal here and either way I art him putting par- Parham on the team, double whammy move there. Uh, <laughs> Casey, he's a rookie mock draft. <laughs> Drop in a deep, deep, deep tight end stash. If we're playing that game, I got Logan Thomas everywhere <laughs> yeah. and he's coming alive, baby. Yeah. Well, you can't pick up Logan Thomas right now. You might be able to pick up Donald Parham. Nope. You're right. Not now. It's provision. Yeah. It's, I'm, it's week one pre- before the season started. I picked him up every. Oh, got to. Got to. All right. Jay Wayne. Jay Wayne. Uh, two six. I'm at two seven. Uh, you just took Joe Burrow at two six. So yep. I, I want to take LaVisca Chenault here because I really like what that guy's going on. And I, I would take Visca on. here. And I think that, uh, you know, he's not going to make it back to me at 210 in three more picks. Um, But I I guess it's probably a smarter move to just go ahead and take Henry Ruggs. Um, He's dealt with some injuries. Him and Derek Carr don't don't jive with their playing style. (laughs) I don't know that Derek Carr is going to be there next year. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that 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 guy's dynamic. And, and elite as far as, as an athletic specimen. And, and I know that I, I like the tape in college, and I thought he was more than just a burner, and he could come back and catch the ball, and then he's good with the ball in his hands, and, and then he could go up and make contested catches. And, you know, when you need him in a basketball game, that's who you, need, that's who you got to pick up. Um, that's so I guess, I'll, I guess I'll take the Henry Ruggs, the first overall wide receiver from this last year, take that swing, put him on my practice squad, and, and, and just see what happens. See where it goes. We're, we're, we're in the bottom of the second here, and everybody, and you're still getting, you know, big swings that could be really fun and really pan out here. Uh, right. I, I would probably take Visca over. That's what I want to do. Over I want to take Visca. Me personally. Uh, I like yeah. I like the idea of fields going down there and, and really unlocking Visca, and he can kind of be in the backfield, do a bunch of different things, depending on what coach they get. Uh, could, be, could be really fun. No slight on Henry Ruggs necessarily, but. Like you said, the playing style doesn't necessarily jive right now. He is a rookie. We'll see if they figure it out. But it does seem like Derek Carr might be jiving with Gruden, although the last couple of weeks haven't been super great uh, for the Raiders. Anyway, Big Co, you are, I believe, up, right? Yep. 2-8. That's I'm right. I'm going to go put Brian Edwards on my practice squad. Um, hadn't got a good shake at it so far um, on that same team. <laughs> Um, yeah. with the Raiders, uh, the, the wide open, mostly wide open, sometimes passes to, um, the old Eagles wide receiver, Aguilar, name? Aguilar. Um, so you've seen, I feel like this year you've seen Derek Carr just throw it downfield more than the last three years combined. Um, taking a lot more between, shots between, between trying to get a double team on Waller 
and no having the respect to Jacobs come coming right up the gut because they'll hand it and to the Jacobs speed of rugs because they'll, they'll hand it to Jacobs and his feet of rugs. Aguilar showing, you know, uh, some good downfield. I'm open. Just throw it to me. Quarterbacks type stuff and cars actually made the throws. So I feel like there could be some room to grow for rugs there. Jay Wayne for your pick there. I feel like that's, uh, I think it's a good, I mean, it's a fantastic pick at this point in the draft. And for me, I'm going to throw Brian Edwards on there too. And just say, you know, we just see you next year. Raiders rookie wide receivers. Because I just enough. think, I mean, he's better than the two catches he has on the season, you know. Um, and I'm going to take that and just stash it. Yeah. All right. And well, it leaves, leaves you all wide open for whoa. you. Um, Let just me get Brian biscuits. Edwards. I mean, Edwards is my guy. He's my boy. Sure. I'm going to grab him for sure. And I'm going to grab him because I know what he can do. But And I don't know, know much about Chenault, but what I did see out of him so far in Jacksonville, the – couple times i picked him in the super contest and i was watching some jacksonville to see what was going on especially earlier in the year when they were actually using him and now they're not for some reason he's Um, been a little banged up chenault looks dang good he looks better (laughs) than anything i've seen out of brian edwards so far i'll tell you yeah yeah i'll take lavisca chenault here um gotta stay healthy gotta get those hammies right um but not super concerned about it. Dude's a, just a stacked monster. He's a huge dude who can run around and do all sorts of different things. I like, again, I like the prospect of them getting one of those top two quarterbacks and really unlocking uh, what Visca could do. And hopefully they get a coach in there who will use him to his full abilities where you can get, uh, and you have seen the Jaguars give him some rushing attempts where he is, he is a good runner of the football. Uh, and there's lots of th- different things you can do with him. Um, and he's, he's a gadget guy, but so much more than a guy, like he's a gadget guy who could be just a standalone receiver. He just happens to be awesome at running the football, uh, sort of like Debo. Um, so I'll take Visca Chenault and Jay Wayne, I believe you're back up, right? Yes, sir. 210. Yeah, man. I don't know what to do with this pick. There's like a handful of guys left that, uh, that I'd be down to take. I mean, KJ Hamler's out there. Um, <clears throat> Stash him. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones has been flashing of late. Mm-hmm. He looks like a big, nice player. Um, AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon. Uh, just the usage there that they're giving both of their running backs ahead of AJ Dillon is encouraging. Still no word on the Aaron Jones contract situation, but it's not like the other two guys behind him have made it easy for – the pay, uh, Packers to not re-sign him. So I would still lean on the side that they're going to re-sign Aaron Jones on the off chance they didn't. Could definitely be down to take some A.J. Dillon regardless, just 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 to test it out and see what happens. Because, I mean, he, he didn't do a lot of pass catching in college. We I think he can catch, but for that to evolve to Matt LaFleur's scheme – it's obvious that he hasn't been able to get up to speed to where they trust him, and and Jamal Williams is a solid professional running back, so they've been giving him the and run. And Jamal Williams is out of there next year, so both of those guys came in at the same time, and they're both under uh, you know contracts right. up. They did they spent a high pick on on AJ Dillon, I think for a reason. So we'll see. Is that who you're taking? <sighs> yeah, let me get AJ Dillon. I should probably boy. I should probably take Zach Moss or uh, or Darnell Mooney. Uh, I can make. A I mean, you traded Zach Moss for that first round pick back when I told you to, right? You you talking to the hypothetical listener? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought for a second it was me, but I had to process yeah. it. Um, no, no. When we had when, last time, we did some. Some guy things. asked us if they would if they would trade Moss for a first round pick. We we said yes. So hopefully, easy. We did that. Man, let me get AJ Dillon just just on the off chance <laughs> next year. Wow, he's a guy that that. That is in Matt hey. Floor's offense, and that that shit's just rolling. Um, we and I, in, I really like loved AJ Dillon. Dillon lot, so. Yeah, yeah, loved AJ yeah. Dillon. Fuck don't thumbs, Let's don't do thumbs it. down me. Hit me up in the comments. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Take AJ Dillon. I love it. All right, All right Big Co, you're, you're up. up. Jinx. <laughs> Two more um, picks. Um, well, I think for me, dynasty stash wise, I think it's an easy KJ Hamler here. Um, if you can argue with me why it's not easy, I'm I'm all ears. 
No, I mean, I've, he's he's gone out there and, and looked. If they, if they could get somebody to distribute, he's he looks like like he's the real deal out there. He can he's fast and slippery. He can get away. He can get open. Doing looking like he did in in uh, college. Well, that's I mean, this the Drew Lock thing was exactly why I was pumping the brakes on the Broncos with the Jerry Judy love and the, and and the stock you put into him going into the rookie drafts this year. Um, early, especially early when he was still talked about as maybe the first or second pick in the rookie draft before the running backs settled themselves out for as far as like Twitter public. Um, you know, just didn't see how Drew Locke was going to get it done, and he hasn't. Um, but, yeah, K.J. Hamler and a small sample size of targets that are catchable coming his way and targets in general just because the Broncos have been not too great on offense. It, when you gets the ball in his hands, it's mm-hmm. it's nice. It's yeah, fun. he's got, he's got that fun. ridiculous speed that can stretch it out as well and make it's you fun. play him one day, or make yeah. your day in one play. He's got change of direction too. You know, mm-hmm. like just he caught that one little. I only call. I only saw just a few minutes, but he caught that one ball on the sidelines um, the other day and just kind of just jumped back into bounds and was going for the first down. It's just. There's, you know, he's not only is he just super fast, he's got, he's quick too. And I was like, that's, that's pretty stuff. Yeah, man. All right. Last pick of the draft here. Decent amount of selections. Sorry. This, this came to mind when I was watching that a little bit of Bron. Got a little bit of I'm faster, but I could potentially turn into Tyler Lockett vibe. I like it. He's just like 178 pounds. So that's the only thing that's. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Can you hold up? Can you hold up? Well, tackled just for a get while. a cycle of steroids in them in the off season. Sure. And well, they don't pounds and not lose any speed. Get pop. They, get a get a vacation cycle again. Come back ready to go. They, don't, they they can't hit you. They don't they don't hit receivers like they used to anyway. So it's not like you, yeah. you know that they used to just ragdoll you all over the place and just pick you up and slam you even after the play was over because that was what you could do because it was the football national football league. True. But now they protect the players and. Being, you know, 178 pounds ain't what it used to be. Still, but, like, I mean, the, the top wide receivers in this rookie class, one thing that's been so impressive across the board with all of them is that they're going across the middle, laying in, laying their bodies on the line, going up, securing the catch, and getting absolutely annihilated after the catch and holding on. And, you know, I don't – not that that's what <laughs> KJ Hiller is going to be doing, but th- th- there is right. potential to be done in – in one play, but obviously that's the case. Who you got with his last pick, Casey? Yeah, I'm not so worried about that with KJ. He's real fast. He'll be all right. He might get popped here and there, but non concern. A um, lot of lot of lot of players left here. I mean, you could take Tua. You could take Tua, and I'm not going to be upset about it. Um, I'm probably going to take. I'm going to take Zach Moss um, just because he's left, and I, I do think he is a, is a good player. Uh, he's got receiving you, chops. You don't, you don't want to take Keyshawn Vaughn. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take. Bye. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Zach Moss here, but um, Cephas just had a, a a big bomb catch. He's he's coming alive here. Possibly he looks like a tight end out there. He does. Um, hey, Cephas looks like a tight end. How's um, Darnell Mooney not getting more love? Well, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. So so Mooney and then Gabriel Davis is absolutely out there about to crush whenever it's his time to be on the field all the time. So it's, it's hard not to take Mooney heart. And if, if they had an offense that could facilitate getting the ball of more than one receiver and actually do something with it, um, the bears and Mooney, I think he's been looking really good. Gabriel Davis deserves every crack at, uh, this last spot here, if not a spot before, um, Cephas, like I said, if you're, if it's tight end premium, Komet has get, been getting some run. He leaped Jimmy Graham and Snapchat the last couple uh, weeks and is starting to get a little bit of run and, and Troutman for the deep stash a little later. Um, love DeVernay, but can't take him just because, you know, the Ravens can't facilitate a decent amount of receivers being usable, but there's there's a lot of talent there. So that's a guy I'd be trading for for next to nothing in the offseason. But I'm going to take Zach Moss here and wrap this thing up. But Gabriel Davis – I could definitely take him. Um, so I like it. That's where we're at. All right, boys and girls, thanks for joining us. We're going to wrap up this mock. We went a little longer than expected as per huge. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And uh, again, if you liked it, comment. If you didn't, comment. But <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs>
Go, get, go hit us up on Patreon, the FF, uh, patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. We've got a Discord channel going. Uh, a lot of fun little chit-chat in there, and it's a more real-time type vibe. And uh, we're dropping extra episodes here and there for the patrons and keep them keep them going with their teams and, and, and hopefully making good decisions for them. And uh, it's just a fun time. It's just a community of people to uh, bounce ideas off of, bounce your questions off of. You, you know, the three of us got started because – you know, we had the three of us that we could we could talk to and talk fantasy and 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 get get in the weeds with these dynasty questions and is it worth to is it worth this is this player worth this trade and what do you think about this and and um, not everybody has somebody they can talk to about all this stuff so that's kind of the, the the type of environment and community we try to create over on our Patreon and we have a great group of guys stay active and 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 we have a lot of fun so don't miss out on that we appreciate you guys listening it's been a minute since we've been back but hopefully it was worth the wait and uh we'll see you next time for your pleasure